Hello, everybody. My guest today is Craig Klein. He's the founder and CEO of SalesNexus.com, a leading CRM, marketing automation, and lead generation solution for sales teams from 10 to 100. He's also the author of Inside Out Selling, a guide to growing and managing sales teams. Craig, are you ready to take us to the top? Yes, sir. What is wrong? This space is so competitive. What is going through your head? Why compete? Why not, why not quit, move on, and try something less competitive? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, we, first of all, we started 15 years ago when there wasn't so many competitors. <laughs> uh, and uh, <clears throat> at that time, our target market was people that had been using ACT. If you remember that, that was like the granddaddy of all. It's uh, still around. They were just they were just on the show. Swift page. Oh, yeah? yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Great program. And everybody loved it. But, you know, it wasn't in the cloud. And Salesforce came around and put everything in the cloud. And that was our plan is we we're going to help everybody using ACT get into the cloud. So why why did Benioff take the take the win there and you didn't you didn't win? Well, he raised a shitload more money than me. <laughs> are you boot, are you bootstrapped? Yeah. Ah, I love that. Okay, very good. I always love a good bootstrap story. Okay, so two thousand three, about fifteen years ago, you founded. Tell me what the average customer pays you per month. Would you say? Uh, well, our average customer is about three or four users. You know, so they're they're paying uh, one hundred fifty two hundred dollars a month. Okay, that's fairly healthy. And um, where or in the early years, two thousand three, walk me through what that first year looked like. I mean, were you developing? Was it pre revenue the whole year? What happened? Yeah, the first year we were we were I was I still had my day job. We were moonlighting, uh, you know, all that, um, and we had a, uh, some development contractors that were helping us write the code. Um, and that was man, what an eye opening experience that was. What about it? I had never managed a development project, so uh, I had managed salespeople. You know, Surprise! Like, two different things, right? So I learned a lot about all of that. Uh, but we got it done, and we got it released, and and uh, you know it worked. It was it worked great. We uh, uh, we got off to a good start, and uh, that was right around the time also that Google was just starting to offer uh, pay per click and things like that, right? So at back then. We didn't have 30 other competitors bidding up the keyword. So we were able to drive lots of traffic with uh, pay-per-click uh -huh. and really get off to a really ramp, you know, ramp up quickly. How many, how many customers did you sign up that first year? Do you remember? Oh man, it wasn't a ton, you know, but for us at the time it was a, it was a lot, you know, I'm going to say three or 400. Okay. You know? And what have you scaled to today? Now we're at about 5,000. Five, okay, that's great. So 5,000 customers. And have you done a bunch of pricing experiments or it's always been about $150, $150 per month average? No, we've played around with different things. One of the things that we do is that's different is we include the implementation service in, the, um, in what we provide. We don't farm that out to consultants like most of our competitors. Um, You're talking so about like a HubSpot that. that has a lot of value added resellers? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we don't do that. We do it ourselves because we know that's how we're going to help our customers get it right. And as you probably know, people often get CRM very wrong. Um, so um, anyway, we played around with packaging that service in different ways. Um, and uh, today, though, we find that we have to compete on, uh, you know, people evaluate our website when they come to it based on the price, right? we got to have some packages that compare with what they're seeing elsewhere, right? And then once we start talking to them, we tell them about the other services that we can offer. And so give me a general sense of kind of where you're at today in terms of revenue. What's your run rate today? Uh, well, let's see. We're doing uh, about uh, three and a half. Three and a half million, million a year? Yeah. Okay. So to walk me through. So three and a half million a year would be about 300 grand per month. But if I take that 5,000 number you just gave me of customers multiplied by the $150 a month average, that would put you at about double that. So is it the 150 is actually lower? Your average is actually lower than that? Or do you have less customers? Well, we, we have a lot of small customers that aren't paying us the 150 or 200, right? Got uh, it. They might be paying us 50 bucks a month or something. I see. I see. Okay. So if you're at, if you're at the 3.5 million run rate today, at, which means you're doing about 300 grand per month, if I divide 5,000 into that, that means your historical average is about 58 bucks per customer per month. Does that sound more accurate? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, that sounds about right. Like say, I, I'd say a third or so of our 
businesses, uh, single user accounts, you know, that yeah. have been with them for years and years and years. The only reason I'm pushing that average question is because a, a trend you've seen a lot of these is you, you figure out creative ways to kind of increase pricing over time. Uh, so, so that's why maybe you have a lot of customers, but your current day starting ARPU is much higher than your historical average. So w- what have you increased pricing over time? And, and if so, what has allowed you to do that? Um, yeah, well, the part of it is the, um, you know, the market's just matured. Right. And, uh, and we've, we added, um, probably five years in, uh, our marketing automation capabilities, or at least we began to layer those in. And so that allowed us to increase prices. Um, okay. And, uh, so now when we're competing, uh, when people are comparing our prices, they're really comparing us with the cost of the CRM and a marketing automation or, uh, email marketing solution. Mm-hmm. And walk me through kind of your growth rate. If you're doing 3.5 million run rate today, where were you a year ago? Um, about three and a quarter. Okay. You know, so, so that's not bad growth for, for bootstrapping. Right. Yeah. We're, we're not in the business of trying to take over the world. We're in the business of keeping our customers for a long time. That's how we make our money. Okay. So, you know, my next question is going to be, if you mentioned keeping customers, right? What's your churn? You know, I, I've never figured out how you guys calculate churn, but, but what I can tell you. Come is on, that, Craig. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't understand the math, but what I can tell you is the average customer lifetime in the CRM business is about 28 months, believe it or not. So people sign up to Salesforce or HubSpot or whatever. And uh, two years later, they're looking for a replacement. Which What's yours? I, I, don't, I don't wish that on anybody. Uh, ours is five years. Five years. Okay, so that would be what sick about sixty months, something like that. Yeah. Okay, and and so what makes that diff? So if the average one stays with you for five years, meaning let's say you sign up a hundred customers this month, and if we fast forward five years from now, um, they'll all be or close to all of them will be churned. That means that you're churning only about two percent of logos per month. That's how you calculate churn. Okay. Yeah. Then that that sounds about right because we that's about right. About every year, it's about ten percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. Well, 2% a month would be 24%, but 10%, I, I get where you're coming from. Um, when, what are you doing? So when someone signs up for the, your CRM platform, what's the first thing you've got to get them to do like in their first session to drastically increase the likelihood they stay with you for a long time? We got to get them to customize it, right? That's the, that's our magic ingredient. You but know, what specifically? Fine. Well, customize just the, the layout and the fields of the data they're going to capture when they're on the phone with a customer. What are they putting in there, right? Um, we're going to lay all that out for them so that it's easy for the salesperson with one hand with a mouse to go click, click, click and capture the key data, right? Because that's going to drive all their marketing automation and everything else. If we can get them to that point, then just being a salesperson in the CRM starts getting easy. And that's really the key to success because that's, you know, salespeople don't use it. CRM doesn't work. You don't stay a customer. Yep. How are what, to the funnel today? How are you getting new customers? Um, we're doing a lot of online advertising and uh, recently. Like how much? The, how much per month? Uh, we're spending around 10 to 15 K. Okay. That's, that's not horrible. That's only what, that's less than 5% of your monthly revenue. Yeah. I mean, you know, we do a little bit of everything else, right? But that's the main piece. Um, and uh, what's really been working well for us lately is video ads, in fact. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. So you're, you got a face for TV is what you're telling me, huh? <laughs> I don't know about me, but we, we, we found some good people that helped us put together some nice little demo kind of, uh, you know, what is it sort of videos and, and a few other things and they're working really well. Um, so you're spending 10, 15 grand a month on paid spend. I assume then you really, you can back into what your customer acquisition cost is. What is it today? Um, it's around, let's see. I know the cost per lead, the cost. So it's, it's around 300 bucks. Okay. And you're in a, in your head, you're doing, okay, cost per lead is 10 bucks and we need 30 leads for one new customer. So 300. Yeah. That's right. Interesting. Um, what do you have to do with those leads to get one of them to convert? Is it just a customization thing? Same answer? Uh, well, it, it kind of depends. You know, like I mentioned before, we have we have a lot of small customers that use our solution. Um, 
Although our, our target is, you know, medium sized uh, sales team, you know, five, 10 or more salespeople where you got the sales manager, maybe some regional managers, that kind of thing. That's where our system really shines. Um, and so that's step one for us is triaging the leads as they come in. Are we talking about a small business or, you know, some sort of medium sized business or, a, you know, large sales team? And we kind of handle those differently, right? What's your team size today? Uh, our sales team? No, just you, oh, everyone, everyone. Oh, we're about 20 people. 20 folks. Um, that's great. And where is everyone remote or everyone is down in Houston? Uh, no, well, we're mostly in Houston, but we're, we're actually virtual. We, we had an office for years and years and about a year ago we went virtual and man, we love it. It's great. And, and you save a big lease, five grand a month, right? Yeah. Although that wasn't really the, the issue. The issue was I live kind of in central Houston and I lived five minutes from where the office was. It was really nice for me, but uh, everyone else lived in the suburbs and they would spend an hour and a half in the car every day at least. You know? Yep. Yep. Um, and so it just made sense. And, and frankly, I like it better too. So. And are you guys cash flow positive today? Oh yeah. So, so yeah. let me ask you a question. How do you, I mean, it sounds like you built a, Jim Collins says good is the enemy of great, right? You've built a company that's spinning off cash flow. You've built it for the past 15 years. There's no incentive for you to do anything with it because you're making money from it. You live a healthy life. You're comfortable. You're happy. Uh, how do you make a decision if someone comes to you and says, Hey, we'll pay you five times your annual revenue, right? To buy the company. How do you decide on a yes or no decision? Well, first of all, you know, I'm not, I'm not that old, but I'm trying to get out of it. And I think that we, um, we have a lot of things that we want to do. You know, um, the, the world's changing a lot. It's changed a lot in the 15 years we've been doing this. And, uh, our mission has always been to help salespeople be better at building long-term relationships with their customers. And uh, I see tons of opportunity to, to add capabilities in our system to help salespeople do that. I also see the sales world is changing radically, right? Um, and so it's if I were buying a CRM right now, I would be pulling my hair out because there's so many options. And how do you know what the future is gonna look like next year, you know? Um, we see some uh, opportunities to integrate with uh, telephony, do some things with mobile, uh, things like that, that uh, can really do some new things. But, so the salesperson's not really using the tool anymore. They're just doing their job. Yeah, these are all the, these are, this is the right answer, Craig, the product focus. But I mean, are you married right now? Nope. Okay, I was, okay well, that takes that question off. Do you have kids? Yeah. Okay, so if you went home to, do you own more than 50% of the company? Yeah. Okay. If you went home to your kids tonight and said, Hey, fellas, uh, and ladies or whatever, I, I just turned down a, a $20 million offer to sell the company. Do they kill you? They go, dad, are you, you're crazy. What's going on? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's not like we're starving over here. We're, we're all having fun. We're doing fine. I like what I do. I have a passion for what I do. You know, that's why I wrote my book. Um, you know, I've been doing this for 12 or 13 years when I started working on it. And what I found was that I'm working with all these customers and there's a lot about managing their sales team that they just don't know, not because they're stupid or anything. It's just they don't know because they're not sales managers, they're business owners, you know? And I think that we're in a unique position to really help businesses get sales right in this crazy new world that's, that's uh, evolving. All right, Craig, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book besides your own? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I would say it's the greatest salesman in the world by Og Mandino. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Um, I can't think of one off the top of my head that you would recognize. I've been, I've been really ha have my head into the blockchain world lately and there's all kinds N of name, name one. Things. The whole point is to find someone I don't recognize. Um, Roger Janik with which, with which company He's with fair marketing. Fair marketing. Very good. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your business besides your own? Um, Paperclip, Google. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Seven and a half, eight. And what's your situation? Well, uh, you mentioned, sorry, how many kids do you have? Three. Three kiddos. And how old are you? I am 52. 52. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Um, 
Start sooner. Guys, there you have it. Start sooner. Coming from a guy that launched in the CRM space pretty early. He was he was pretty soon for his industry in 2003. Helped usher in that era today as 5,000 paying customers doing about 3.5 million bucks in terms of AR run rate. That's up about, call it 20, 10% from about a year ago when he was doing about 3.2 in terms of AR, but bootstrapped, which I love. Cash flow positive, 2% logo churn per month. So healthy lifetime value pays on average 300 bucks to acquire a customer. So it gets paid back in less than, call it five, six months. Team of 20 based in Houston and other remote locations. Craig, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. It was fun.